Now, we will discuss the open educational resources. So I hope you better understand the meaning of open as we have just discussed the open education licenses that is a creative commons license. So open mean do not need the permission to use the content for distribution and for use for modification and for remixing and the attribution to the original author is required. The content is almost free and then we have the educational that is content which is for educational use and we have the resources. Resources mean the type of content. Then the type of content it may be images, it may be video, it may be document, it may be interactive and it may be immersive content. This immersive term may be new for you. Immersive is used when you are viewing the content relevant to the augmented and virtual reality. It give you an immersive environment so the learners can think they are actually inside that environment. So, open education resources are educational content that reside in public domain or have been released under an open license that permit their fair use and repurposing by others. Open education resources should meet the two criteria. The first is the format of the content and second is the nature of the content. The format is saying that it should be adaptable easily by the learners. And the second permits its free use and repurposing by others that solely depends upon the licensing. The open provision of education resources enabled by information and communication technologies for consultation, use and adaptation by a community of users for non-commercial purposes. So this is the definition given by the UNESCO for open educational resources. Open education resources are digitized material offer freely and openly for educators, students, self-learners to use and reuse for teaching and learning process and even for research. As per David Havle, the open education resources should compile with five R's. The first is retain, the right to make, own and control copies of the content. For example, one can download one can make a duplicate copies, one can store and one can manage these resources. The second R is reuse, the right to use the content in a wide range of ways. For example, in a class, in a study group, all in a website and maybe as a video. The next R is the revise, the right to adapt, adjust, modify or alter the content itself. For example, if I have downloaded some of the content, I am should be in a position to edit that content, to translate that content. The next R is the remix, the right to combine the original or revised content with other material to create something new. And the last R is the redistribute, the right to share the copies of the original content, even your revisions or your remix with others. So why we choose this open educational resources? Definitely they are the cost saving because someone has already created the resources. So I am just downloading from the internet or other portals and using it. Their pedagogical benefits, you can use, even you can twink upon these materials. Say for example, there is a big video and you want to use a small chunk of it for your own pedagogical approach, definitely you can trim that video. Knowledge creation and disseminations. There are many people who are actually able to create the good content. And if these people are create their own content and sharing irrespective of where they are sitting or what level they are having their own organizations, it will create a knowledge hub. Scalability, there is no issue with the scalability, you can have as many as copies to distribute as many as people's. Quick circulation because it is available online, expanded access to the learning, ties for the alumni, this is very important. Say for example, if some alumni are being retired from your institutions and they are good for creating the, this open education resources or e-content, we should use them. Showcasing of innovation and talent. Now anyone can show their talent. Say for example, if you develop some good content, definitely you can upload it on YouTube and you will be popular. Continually improved resources. The first part for selection of the open education resource for the tech savvy teachers is to find out the license of the content. 
definitely it should be the open license so that when you are using that content and you are releasing that content to the internet someone else can use that content and edit and modify as their pedagogical needs and the quality of the content you must have a peer review process for adaptation of these content adaptability modularity and printability the content should be in in such a format that should be adapted easily and if you want to take out the print out of the copies then it definitely uh, done that accessibility universal design of is the format that we develop the content it should be universal and the appropriateness of the content should be seen supplementary material if there is a supplementary material along with this open education resources definitely it is an edge so what are the disadvantage for selecting while selecting these open education resources there may be quality issues lack of human interaction between teachers and students language or cultural barriers technical issues and sustainability issues now we will discuss the models for instructional design say for example as a tech savvy teacher you want to create your own content so what instructional design you need to follow there are many instructional designs like adi model sam model rapid prototyping dick and carry and guided learning but the most popular model for instructional design is the adi model adi model means analysis design development and evaluate in analysis phase you have to define the needs and constraint of the learners in design phase specify learning activities assessment and choose methods and medias in the development phase begin production formative evaluation and revise in implementation put the plan into actions and finally for evaluation evaluate the plan from all levels for next implementations so let's analyze the first phase in a broad way what actually you want to look first you need to find out who your learner are the overall goals you are trying to achieve and the overall knowledge skills attitude and behavior that need to be taught the amount and level of content needed what resources are required and available and definitely availability of existing resources say for example you already have something you want to change it edit and make it to e content or maybe you are developing some fresh e content or maybe you are mixing the both of the two in the design phase how will the content and activities be sequenced presented and reinforced what skills or outcomes are you hoping to achieve for each what methodology will you use to achieve each objective and what type of media and resources will be used in the instruction how will you assess the students understanding of the material so in in development phase the development phase of the adi model deals with building the content in itself this stage focuses on putting the theories and questions to bed and creating concrete manifestations in the implementation phase this is the actual delivery of the content the implementation requires that the elements of the learning environment be identified and teaching strategies be developed evaluation of the experience is the last stage of adi model it provides information that should be used in adi modification of the content evaluation is best done when an independent evaluator takes notes and details issues for resolution so this is the beauty of the adi model that there is a provision for revision in each and every stage for example when you go for the design phase and you find out that there is a dissimilarities in the phase go back and revise the analysis phase and like this you can revise each and every step at any stage to have a better instructional design so this is a very simple design hope you understand it and we have it in the next activities thank you very much